Welcome to The Sacramentalist, a podcast where the ancient Christian faith is brought to bear on issues prevalent in modern culture. We're your hosts. I'm Father Wesley Walker. And I'm Father Creighton McElveen. And today we are bringing you another short episode, the last short episode in our season, this time on the topic of invocation or praying to the saints. Invocation means calling on someone for aid, and Christians universally agree that we can and should invoke God for our help. But where it gets tricky, for some at least, is calling on saints. There are a few objections usually offered against the invocation of saints. Some people might say that they only trust in Christ as their mediator and that prayers to the saints, in a sense, trades off with that. A more moderate objection is that the saints who are dead simply cannot hear us. So to better understand why we as Anglo-Catholics engage in this practice, we're going to zero in on three truths today. Yeah, the the first truth is that there is no trade-off between God and his saints. God created the heaven and the earth, which means that God is not a creature. He is not part of the world. As a result, God is not just a cause amongst causes. Uh, and we see this in the operation of the world. Why does a tree grow? Because a seed is planted, watered, cared for. Yet there's also a sense in which God causes the seed to grow through natural causes. Now, we know this is true spiritually. How do we become a Christian? Maybe we were baptized by a priest as a baby. Maybe we heard a preacher preach a sermon that convicted you and showed you your need for God. Maybe you read works by great saints and are inspired to a life of holiness. In each of these cases, does the work of the priest, preacher, or saint usurp God as a cause? So when we ask a saint for a prayer or intercession, we're not asking them to replace Christ. Our petition to the saint doesn't usurp God's power or glory uh, as if that were at all possible. And in fact, actually, we see in 1 Thessalonians 1.10, St. Paul reminds us that Christ will come to be glorified in his saints. So when we invoke a saint, we're actually bringing God glory. And why is that? Well, that brings us to our second truth. Yeah, and so the second truth is that, is that we can invoke the saints because all of us are in Christ. When we're baptized, we're made part of the body of Christ, the blessed company of all faithful people, as we pray. Part of the unity of the body of Christ means not just being united to the person of Jesus, but also to everyone else who is in Christ. It's easy for us to acknowledge that despite our unhappy differences, there is an essential unity between all Christians around the world and our joint profession of Christ as Lord. Where this gets trickier is when it comes to Christians who aren't alive on earth. Some people might say that because the saints are dead, they cannot hear our prayers. It's important to remember what Jesus says to the Sadducees in Matthew 22, though, when they asked him who the woman is married to um, if she has multiple deceased husbands. One of Jesus' answers in defending the doctrine of the resurrection to them is that God is not the God of the dead, but of the living. To express this truth, the church often has made distinctions between three parts of the church. The church militant, those of us who are on earth right now striving towards holiness the church expectant, those Christians who are in purgatory, and the church triumphant, which is made up of those saints in heaven. The channel of communication between us and them is none other than Jesus Christ. The saints in light are aware of our prayers because they behold the beatific vision and in so doing, know everything necessary for their perfect happiness. So far from replacing or impinging on Christ as the mediator, Invocation of the saints actually accentuates our understanding of Christ's mediatorial role. Yeah, and that leads us to the third truth, uh, which is that the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So many people might ask why we should invoke saints uh, when we can go straight to Jesus. I've heard that uh, many, many times. The beginning of the answer can be found in James 5.16. Uh, where it says, the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So remember that the church triumphant, church expectant, and church militant are full members of the body of Christ. 
So as participants in the body, we are told to bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. That's Galatians 6, 2. The work of intercession is one of the most important vocations that the body's members uh, have, and this includes those in heaven. In fact, the author of the epistle to the Hebrews reminds us that the great cloud of witnesses are watching us run our race like spectators at a sporting event. Anyone who has gone to a sporting event knows that the crowd can play a really instrumental role in the home team's success uh, with their cheering and their support. So here we're reminded that the saints in heaven play a similar role in pushing us forward with their prayers. So going back to the epistle of St. James, he affirms that the prayers of a righteous person have a great deal of power. Intuitively, I think we know this. It's why when we meet someone in our churches, we might ask them specially to pray for us if we're in need. If the principle is true that righteous people pray with great potency, it seems advantageous for us to invoke the saints who we know have successfully run the race. There's a really beautiful example of this in the second canto of Dante's Inferno, where the Blessed Virgin Mary sends St. Lucy to Beatrice to urge her to work on Dante's behalf. This is what compels Beatrice to recruit Virgil to be Dante's guide through hell and purgatory. I think this is a great example of God working through the prayers of the saints and uh, acting as secondary causes like Lucy or Beatrice and even Virgil, who himself is stuck in limbo. Yeah, absolutely. It's a really beautiful uh, canto and a, a beautiful picture of, of how all this works. So, so we hope that this short on invocation clears away some of the misunderstandings that too often haunt this amazingly Christocentric practice of invocation of saints. Invocation is a firm reminder that we are planted in the body of Christ and as a result experience a kind of organic and sacramental unity with all Christians who are part of the church triumphant, expectant, and militant. God is glorified in his saints. All of us are in Christ, and the prayer of a righteous man availeth much. So to close, we will invoke one of our favorite saints, which is the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Amen.